So the time has come. I've decided to start trying to get my Neolampologus similis to spawn. Don't give these guys bloodworms. The main key ingredient that you need for shell dwellers is... So the time has come. I've decided to start trying to get my Neolampologus similis to spawn. And I want to put them in this tank. And this tank has some um, Neolampologus curiurus in it. Some fry, so I'm going to get them out of here, put them in a grow out aquarium. Because it's a bit of a waste just to have some fry in here. Predominantly use these aquariums for breeding. They are absolute lunatics. When the moment you put a net in there or put your hand in there, they just jump everywhere. So I'm actually going to lower the water level a little bit more so they don't just jump out because they go ballistic. Anyway, so I'm going to start catching them out, put them in the grow out aquarium, and then we'll get cracking with setting this tank up for Neolampologus similis. Beautiful shell dweller from Lake Tanganyika in Africa. Okay, here we go guys. The calm before the storm. See I've lowered the water level, taken the rocks out, make it a little bit easier to catch them. A little less stressful for the fish. But uh, watch how psycho they go once I put them in here. jumping out of the net, up the, they, they kind of crawl up the sides of the net, it's mental. <laughs> Definitely the craziest fish I ever fished Okay, so all the Kuriuris have been caught out, they're in their grow out tank now. And uh, the only fish that are left in here is a pair of bristlenose catfish, just as part of the cleanup crew. Help me keep this tank nice and clean. This aquascape is going to be very simple. Definitely, if you're going to keep any shell dweller, I recommend you keep them with a sand bed because they love to dig. So give them a nice sand bed. They don't need much structure in the way of rocks for aquascaping. I am going to add some just purely for decorative purposes. And um, these were the rocks that were in there before. Now, you really want to be careful when adding the rocks uh, that you don't, obviously, uh, hit the glass so again they definitely don't need rocks in their aquarium uh, rocks do play a nice uh, benefit if you've got territorial issues uh, with breaking up the line of sight obviously they they play uh, kind of a limited role in doing that uh, but if you need to break up the line of sight say between uh, two females in a, in a harem with their male, where the two females are fighting. Now, I'm not sure how much aggression there will be between the similars when I put a pop them in here. Uh, there might be some, and I might have to re aquascape it. But that's basically all, all there is to it. But the main key ingredient that you need for shell dwellers is shells, obviously. Uh, you want at least one to two shells per fish. Uh, so, what I do, you want to make sure you get all the air out of all the shells. So, point them upwards, twist them around a bit, make sure all the air bubbles have come out and then you're fine. So hopefully you can see on camera what the shells look like. They're a little bit elongated. I'm just going to pop them around the, the aquarium. They don't have to be massive shells because the similars aren't the largest fish in the world. Uh, so I'm just going to pop them all around the aquarium uh, for the fish and uh, we'll see how they go. They'll decide which shells they want to use and which shells they'll bury. Uh, they like to bury their shells um, to keep out competition from the area. Uh, that's what they do in the wild. And they'll pick their own shells. Uh, to live in and then they'll cover up part of the opening of the shell just so their body can fit in it so it's kind of an interesting behavior with uh, shellies they'll definitely cover the shells up that they aren't using and then with the shells they are using they'll uh, cover them up just enough uh, the opening just enough so their bodies fit through just to keep predators out and now to pop the fish in so this should be a lot easier there's absolutely no rocks or anything in the tank that the similars are currently in. And I've caught all five in the one go. Compared to <laughs> taking a thousand attempts to get all those curiuris out. So here we go. Similars are finally in the proper tank to spawn in. Now they are still a little bit small. There are two that are larger. I suspect they're the males. Uh, but Hopefully they'll get spawning soon, but we'll see. So they're just exploring their tank. Um, once I've got all the water from the water change reservoirs in uh, these tanks on this sump system, I'll turn on the return pumps. Water will start flowing into this aquarium. We'll start filling up, spill over the bulkhead at the back of the tank, and then go back to the sump. And then this tank 
will become clear in a number of hours. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much all there is to it. There's nothing complicated about it. Just add some sand, a few rocks if you really want some decoration. It does again help break up the line of sight is if there is aggression amongst your fish, but don't solely rely on that. That's all there is to it guys. Just pop in some shells, have a nice sand bed for them. Good filtration. Keep up your weekly water changes at 20 to 25% and these guys will flourish in your aquarium. Simple as that. So it's a couple days after I've put the similis in this tank. In the frame on the left there, you can see three of the similis uh, cording around the shells at the front of the aquarium. There's actually two more similis in this tank. There's five in total. Uh, there's one at the back, that's hiding under the big rock. And I'm not sure where the other one is. So they've started to create their own little territory, started to dig quite a bit and started to bury some of the shells. As you can see, it looks a little different to how it looked when I first popped the Neil Ampelogus similis in this aquarium. Now, I actually do have one additional similis. It's a larger male who is about one centimetre longer than the largest fish you see on the left there. Yeah, that's all there is to it, really. You just want to add a few shells to per fish. These shells are sold as escargo shells. Right now, it looks like there's, from that activity, it looks like the larger fish is a male and the two smaller fish are females. And it uh, looks like a trio is forming already. These guys are on the verge of spawning size, I would say. I think they need to be a little bit bigger, but I'm sure there'll be some spawning activity in here in no time. I did, when I was younger, breed multifasciatus, Neolamprologus multifasciatus. Give them a nice deep sand bed. Uh, multifasciatus especially, they love to dig. Similis, you can see they've already dug quite a bit even though these fish are a small size. Add some crushed coal to the aquarium uh, for that sand bed or like I've done here, pool filter sand. Just make sure when you, if you buy the pool filter sand, it doesn't say zeolite on it uh, because that will change the water parameters. I'm not sure what else it will do. The other thing you might notice with this tank, there's no heater. There's no aeration on the aquarium, and that's purely because I have this aquarium set up on a sump system. It's connected to 22 aquariums in my fish room, and I wanted to do that so I don't see any equipment in the aquariums, filters and all that. They can be a little bit of an eyesore, so I prefer not to see them in my tanks, especially these tanks that are at eye level in the fish room. So I do try to uh, aquascape these aquariums that are eye level, and so I can enjoy the, the fish uh, a little bit more than uh, say the great aquariums which are way above my head, they're bare bottom and uh, they do have sponge filters in them just for additional filtration if I need to isolate any of any of the fish in this fish room, they do have sponge filters in them but I can't see them because they're up higher. Now if you do want to set up a shell dweller aquarium, if these fish do interest you, any of the shell dwellers, I do recommend a species only tank if you really want to get serious about breeding them. For these guys they're in a two foot long by two foot wide by 14 inch tall aquarium. The shell dwellers prefer a wide footprint rather than a tall, narrow aquarium because they predominantly stay on the sand bed hiding in their shells. It's better to give them a large footprint, a large area than a tall, narrow aquarium. So for filtration for these guys, you could get away with a couple sponge filters depending on the size of the sponge filters for a tank this size. I do prefer internal power filters, the mechanical filtration over sponge filters, but that's just me. And you'd want a heater in here as well, say 100 what heater in an aquarium this size should be fine. Keep up your 25% water changes, feed in a range of foods, high quality pellets, pre-soaked in aquarium water for about 10 minutes so those pellets expand before the fish eat them so they don't expand inside your fish's gut and also supplement their diet with some frozen foods such as brine shrimp or mysa shrimp. Don't give these guys bloodworms. I've been told that bloodworms have hooks on them. I haven't seen these, but I've been told that and that's why I avoid them. Uh, I don't feed any of my fish bloodworms. The other thing with bloodworms is I have an allergic reaction to the bloodworms where the edges of my nails become extremely itchy if my fingers come in contact with the bloodworms. Pretty bad allergic reactions to them in the past. Because of my allergic reaction to bloodworms, as well as the potential for the bloodworms to cause damage to the fish, I just don't feed them. So I've never fed them um, bloodworms, any of my fish in my fish room. I've never fed them bloodworms. But if you feed them bloodworms, let me know what you think. How are your fish doing? And do you suffer from allergic reactions from them? But anyway, guys, there you have it. My guide on how to set up a shell dweller aquarium for your Neolamprologus similis. I really hope you enjoyed that video and found it informative. If you did, please give me a thumbs up, comment, and consider subscribing to the channel. I really would appreciate it. And also share the video if you can. That really does help the channel. Anyway, guys, I'm going to wrap this video up now. Thanks, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.